Hey guys, Kevin here from thesportsgeek.com and in this video I'm going to talk about ownership percentages and why it matters for DFS. Okay, so I'm going to start with an example for you using the quarterback position. So let's say that there's two popular uh, quarterbacks for the week, Brady and Rivers. Let's say that Brady is 30% owned and Rivers is 20% owned. You decide to go with Blake Bortles, who is 1% owned. So that's your pick there. So Brady is 30% owned. He has a bad game, maybe he gets injured, something happens, he just doesn't play well, he puts up 10 points. Rivers, same thing, doesn't play well, puts up 10 points. Bortles, we're going to exaggerate on this a bit, but Bortles puts up 50 points. So it does happen sometimes, it happened with Breeze last week, um, week, eight of the, week 8 of the 2015 season. So let's just exaggerate here and say Breeze puts up 50 points. So now you're sitting at 50 points with eight players left. 50% of the field, so anyone who had Breeze or Rivers as their quarterback, they're sitting with 10 points with eight players left. So now, let's say that the winning score is 200 for the week. Um, you only have to get 150 points between your eight players where the field has to get, the 50% of the field has to get 190 uh, points to get to their 200 winning score. So as you can see there, if you do, get, if you do have a low owned player who uh, hits it big, you're getting a huge advantage over the field. All right, so does that mean you should always just go for low owned players? No, absolutely not. Let's say that you project Brady is gonna have a monster week and you think he's gonna be the guy that puts up 50 points. If he does put up 50 points and you owned Bortles and he uh, was 1% owned, you went with the, the uh, risky pick for the low owned play and Bortles put up maybe, let's say two fantasy points, you are out of it for the week 100%. You're not gonna win, you're probably not even gonna cash. So just because he's low owned, just because you think someone's gonna be low owned doesn't mean you should take them. You always wanna go where the points are gonna be. But let's say that you have two players that you're trying to decide between, let's say it's Brady and Bortles, and you have them both projected for the same amount of points. Let's say you project Brady to get 20 points, and you think Bortles is also, Bortles is also gonna get 20 points, but you project that because it's Brady, he's popular, he's a good player, Bortles not as good, not as popular, you project that Brady's gonna be higher owned, and also Bortles is costing you less money, so Brady's more expensive and higher owned, but you think they're gonna get the same amount of points, you should always go with the cheaper, um, lower owned player. Okay, so with that said, sometimes you can pay up for low owned players. So an example this week is Julio Jones is 9,200, and we've got Odell Beckham at 8,800. So this week with their matchups, I project them to get around the same point. So I kind of, let's say I project them to get 25 points each. So if you were new to DFS, you might think, because I project them to get the exact same number of points, I'm gonna automatically go with the guy who's $400 cheaper. Well, last week, Odell put up three touchdowns and he's $400 cheaper. Julio had a good game too, but Odell is on everyone's mind because everyone who didn't play him last week was wishing they did because they would have uh, had a lot more success in the tournaments. So let's say Odell, we project Odell to be 30% uh, owned. And Julio, good player, he's gonna be highly owned, but this week people are going down to the 8,800, so we're gonna guess that Julio is gonna be 7% owned. So with those ownership percentages and a $400 difference and a same projection in points, sometimes it does actually make sense to pay up, so you're paying up, you're pay spending $400 more for a guy you project to get the same points, but you project his ownership to be a lot less owned. So you project him to be 7% owned, you project Odell to be 30% owned. 
So sometimes it does make sense. It all depends on your roster configuration. If you can fit in the extra $400 for Julio, sometimes it does make sense. Let's say that you go with that and Julio puts up 40 points, Odell has a bad game and puts up 10 points. You're getting a 30 point advantage on these 23% of people, uh, the difference here in the ownership. So that's a way that you can pay up for a player for low ownership. All right guys, I hope this video helped you guys understand ownership and why it's important and why you can use that as a strategy for your DFS lineups. Good luck in your contest guys, cheers.